Hey, this is Tipo Beat Heater 1871. Um, I'm here to share with you Story Share and uh, Pitbull Misunderstood. Um, the, the title Pitbull Misunderstood that came from, uh, you know, kind of the media giving flack to uh, Pitbulls, basically. You know, people automatically, you know, when they see a Pitbull, some people will get scared because they think automatically that's a bad dog to have you know I've seen some videos of pitbulls getting abused or killed just because of their breed the name but uh I'm gonna share some stories and I'm gonna tell everybody right now to uh, be respectful of some of these stories or not some all of these stories if it's comical or not just you know don't, don't cross that line you know, if the joke is not too bad, you know, if you're going to joke about something. But please, be respectful. Um, I'm going to do this first story here. I'm going to see how good this, this goes. Uh, it's like a video log, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to try to start doing these because um, I've, I've seen just so much stuff. You know, I've, I've been reading stuff on uh, Facebook and you know people people seem sad all the time and depressed and uh, I'm not gonna lie you know I'm, I'm in that boat too people write some stupid stuff on Facebook but you know sometimes it happens you know they have nobody to go to these people it seems like so they have to write it on Facebook and then maybe somebody will see it and some people do some people don't but uh let me get on with the uh, first story here. Alright. <clears throat> About seven years old, my parents get a call. I no longer have an uncle. Two weeks after his 21st, he passed out drunk on a set of railroad tracks. Put two and two together. It was a closed casket. Felt pretty shaken up at seven. You realize what death really is and that you'll never see that person again. I recovered with family and friends. Five years later, one week after my 12th birthday, mom gets a call from grand, uh, my grandparents. It took a lot to come to grip with the fact that my own father had taken someone's life in the most gruesome, horrifying way. I fully understand at this point in my life that I'll never see him on the outside again. No more late night bike rides or trips to the park nothing at this point I'm pretty okay I, w I was one that held everything and suppressed it I didn't realize by doing this it was only prolonging the fact that it will come out eventually and it will be ugly and it was when I was about 14 starting high school I find out I won't be with my friends I grew up with. Instead, I'll be starting at a completely new school. The only upside was I made dance team. So I know I knew some people, so it wouldn't be that bad. Wrong. I felt like such an outsider, a loner, no one wanted to talk to. No no one to befriend. I was slowly slipping. About six months after I started, I was introduced to what would later become my best friend and the sole reason my uncle and dad aren't with me today Mr. Alcohol God did it feel good to drink and not think of anything but <clears throat> but the good time we were having but of course I didn't know this would also lead to my explosion about a year and a half goes by and I've had my fair share of parties starting not caring anymore the things that made me happy just seemed to bore me the thing that made me feel alive was getting into any any kind of trouble I could I'm about 16 at this time and don't realize how bad my depression that started when I was 7 had sunk in Every day felt like it should be my last. Started skipping school, smoking, heavy drinking, and even quit dancing. Eventually, my mother noticed and noticed the downward spiral. 
I was I was in and transferred me over to the school all my friends were at hoping with them it would kickstart my mood and I'd be happy again it's too late I already headed down the road to nowhere I went through what I thought was a very hard breakup and that's when everything just hit bottom not only to add to my messed up past I begin to think that maybe that razor blade would help so to this day I count up to about 123 scars on my wrist legs and ankles about a after a bad night of drinking and my second trip to the ER for alcohol poisoning I confessed to the nurse how bad I'm feeling inside and how painful life is in general <clears throat> If I if I could thank that nurse, I would. They would not let me leave until I was admitted to a mental hospital, and it was there that I finally got the help I needed. I rebuilt the bridges with family members I'd hurt so bad with everything that I was doing, and even fi and even finally saw that there was more to life than hanging on to the bad. I stopped cutting but only for a while but I was released I felt great I saw that everyone that knew I was in their care and wanted me cured but slowly I became a voice in the background again or so I thought at the time and once again turned to alcohol I felt so low again like no one wanted me wanted me around anymore and the more I drank the more I hoped that I'd kill that it'd kill me one day and I'd finally be at peace with the mini war that was going inside me. But it never came. I started getting into trouble with the law, running away, starting fights, smoking, tickets. I was just back to not caring. And the fact that I was better only a month ago made me think it was always going to be this way. I was I was always going to feel like this until the day I die. I was at an all time low. Family members no longer wanted anything to do with me. They loved me, yes, very much. This much I knew, everything I was going through, no one wants to be brought down to. <clears throat> Give me a second here. Gotta scroll up. I felt so helpless. Don't ask me how or why, but for some reason, little by little, I started coming out of my dark, my dark world, and no one seemed to care. I started feeling better again, like someone had just flipped the switch, and I, I was same, I was that person again. Slowly, my family trusted me more and more. Now, love having me come along on family trips and such cause. I'm f I'm fun, happy all the time. I think something just clicked finally inside and said, "Enough is enough. Be happy." Now, I don't hold on to my past as something horrible. I went through, or even shun it out of my head. I embrace it. It's the reason I can smile and say today was a good day because I've been through hell, my own personal hell that I created for myself. Today I'm cheerful, happy, people like being around me, but no one, not even my worst enemy, should have to feel that low. That was that was the first story there. Um I try to squeeze in another one, but <clears throat> uh, the type of camera I'm using, it's laptop. If I want to just convert it to YouTube right away, I have to have it under a certain limit. But uh, maybe, maybe I'll try. But uh, when I first read this story, you know, I was. I was kind of shocked. I was, you know, especially that first part. 
like, it just hit me right away, you know, with the, you know, getting the phone call and, you know, saying that your uncle's dead and then your dad doing something crazy like that, it's, it's messed up and it's hard, you know, to deal with stuff like that. And that's what, you know, when, when things go bad, you know, for whatever reason, people, you know, they, they go to alcohol, they go to drugs. They do what they can to get rid of that pain, but you know you you hear it in like some movies or you know from whatever that alcohol doesn't do anything but numbs the pain. You know people might seem like that's some stupid shit, but it's true because I went through the same thing. I want I want to do some messed up stuff too, and like that's what I that's what I want went to you know I I went to alcohol, that's what I did. Like I felt good, yeah, for you know however long I was drinking, and then when I stopped, psh, let me tell you, when I first started drinking, you know like I I was I was messed up you know. And I, <clears throat> I, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel pain. I didn't feel nothing. I had no emotion. I had nothing. But as soon as I stopped, you know, when reality kicked in, that was like the worst feeling. It's like gravity just hit you. You know, I felt like I was floating because I was drinking. I was doing some drugs, and then once you stop, that's that shit sucks. I'm gonna tell you that much. It, you know, if you know anybody's watching this, and if like they've had that trouble, man, they they know what it's like. They do. But you know that that's just messed up, you know. But you know, if you read this, and not read it. If you if you listen to this, please be respectful. Um, maybe I'll post uh. You know what this person said to me. I won't. I won't uh, mention their name or nothing. Um, I'll put this on my YouTube page, so you can uh, also, you know, you can listen to it and then follow along. Because you know, I, I did have some issues. You know, I was stuttering or kind of got stuck in some areas, but it's whatever. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, keep. Keep on sending me more, and uh, please be respectful, like I said, and, uh, you know, like this, please, like it, don't like it, whatever, but uh, also check out my music still, um, uh, my mixtape should be dropping sometime soon, just uh, keep on sending me more, man, like doing stuff like this, so, um, Keep on sending me some shit. Alright, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it's T Po Beat Heater 1871. And this has been Story Share Pitbull Misunderstood.